Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is my second video on growing up as a Jehovah's Witness. I've turned the camera around because I've taken some notes and I won't be able to read my own handwriting with my magnifying glass and video at the same time. In the first video I explained that Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate Christmas. I think it's safe to say, I better clarify and say that um, they don't celebrate anything bar weddings and wedding anniversaries. Um, so, yes, that means no birthdays, no Easter, Valentine's Day, um, I'm trying to think of what other holidays, Halloween, um, Mother's Day, Father's Day, nothing like that at all is celebrated. Um, Christmas and birthdays, my first experience of Christmas and birthdays was when I was 19. Uh, friends that I was staying with at the time threw me a surprise birthday party and it's a memory that will stick in my memory for forever, I think, um, as will my first Christmas. I think even at 19, I felt the magic of Christmas touch me um, and even when I first woke up and tripped over my pillowcase stocking, <laughs> um, it suddenly hit me, wow, oh, so this, so this is Christmas then, this is what Christmas is, um, seeing the joy on the family's face as they opened presents from Santa and, um, from each other. It's a, a, a memory that will stay with me always. And I think it's stuck in me so much that I, even now, all these years later, um, I still get excited about Christmas. And I still want to make an effort with decorations and food. And I go over the top with my mum, especially. I go over the top present-wise. There truly is more joy in giving than receiving, and I get so much pleasure um, seeing her opening presents and try to guess what they are, and her being a bit like a child in a way because you know, for about a week before Christmas, looking at things underneath my Christmas tree whenever she comes into my house, uh, looking at things, going, "Oh, was that one for me?" and "Oh, um, wonder what was in that one," and "Oh, opening one wouldn't hurt." <laughs> Uh, so we started a tradition many years ago, the two of us, um, that we each open a small present on Christmas Eve and that's it. That's the only before Christmas that, that we have is one very small present. Um, Christmas is... Obviously, I never had them. My brother had them because they didn't join the witnesses until he was, uh, I think he was about three or four, maybe a little bit younger. Um, so, yeah, he he did sort of experience Christmas, not that he probably remembered it. Uh, Mum and Dad obviously grew up as non Jehovah's Witnesses and I was born into it, so I didn't know any different. And same with my birthday, I, I didn't even know my date of birth until... I think it was about 16, 15, 16, when I had to ask my mum my date of birth for forms and things that I had to fill in. I think it was to get my national insurance card. <laughs> um, so yes, they, they, they don't believe in any of that. They also don't believe in encouraging children within the religion to go to university or college or anything like that. You're not encouraged to have dreams of, of being a doctor or a a lawyer or a nurse or anything like that. Um, you're just encouraged to go to Bethel, which is, to put it in sort of simple terms, it's a Jehovah's Witness university. It's a, a Bible university. Um, it's it's where you're supposed to dream to go um, to learn more. Uh, and you're if you're not capable or picked to go there, um, then you're supposed to do the pioneering work, which is going door to door and, and doing the preaching work. And you have to do so many hours a month for that. 
um, which is very time consuming. I, I didn't do any pioneering and it's not something that I wanted to do. And I didn't want to go to Bethel either. Um, I was fortunate in the fact that my parents did encourage me to better myself education wise and that they taught me to do my best and that they always encouraged me and backed me and made me believe that I could fly to the moon and back if I wanted to, if I really wanted to. Um, they never ever discouraged me or told me that I wasn't good enough. However, the religion did. And um, speaking to Jehovah's Witness friends that I had at the time, you know, they were going to go to, to Bethel and they were going to do this and going to do that and going to do the other, all uh, religion based. I always did feel inadequate and that I wasn't good enough. And I think I, I blame the witnesses for my even now um, self-doubt and uh, lack of self-confidence. Um, and I can't take a compliment very well. I get very embarrassed. I try to take a compliment. I, I always think, well, I overthink things like compliments and that. I think, well, well, you know, what are they gaining from it? Because that's what the witnesses teach you is that you're not supposed to. It's it's a it's a sin to believe in yourself or pat yourself on the back. It, it's classed as boasting and that's vain and it's it's wrong. It's it's sinful and you don't do it. So uh, even down to clothes and things, you, you weren't allowed to keep up with fashion. Um, girls and women weren't allowed to wear trousers. You had to wear skirts, dresses. Um, trousers were only to be worn by men. And uh, your, your blouses and things weren't supposed to be low cut or, or show, show any any cleavage or anything and, and your skirts weren't supposed to be above the knee. Um, they had to be uh, calf length or or longer if possible. Which wasn't a problem for me because I wasn't a fan of trousers anyway apart from when I did horse riding. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, I used to feel sorry for the boys and the men because, you know, they wear suits all the time. Uh, to the meetings and um, going out on the the ministry work, the door-to-door -door work, they had to do that. Um, so, I mean, they were, it was a case of you weren't allowed to, to wear shorts or anything. Um, men aren't allowed to have beards or moustaches because that's classed as covering up their face and um, it's only people uh, like Satan and Satan's demons that that would have beards and moustaches and things to, to cover up their face. Um, that's That was just the, the belief back then. I believe th some things have slackened now and changed a little bit. Also, uh, if you were baptised, you were watched very carefully. And if you do something that they consider to be sinful and wrong, then they can uh, discommunicate you. Um, they would take you and have a meeting, but basically they wouldn't really listen to you. Um, I haven't been what, what they call disfellowshipped, and that is that they do a, a shunning. They, they, they announce your name on the platform if you've committed a sin, as they, as they call it. Um, and that could be for something as simple as taking a puff of a cigarette, um, holding the hand of the opposite sex. If you if you weren't in a, if you weren't in, in married to them, um, just to give you an example, my mum was obviously baptised, and uh, many years after my my dad passed away, um, my mum was told on. You could say. Um, for holding a worldly man's hand. It turned out it was a gentleman that she was uh, going out with. 
but she hadn't plucked up the courage to tell the elders and, and the religion that that she'd found um, companionship out with the witnesses. Um, but yes, yeah, she, she was found walking up the high street, uh, going shopping with this gentleman, and uh, she was reported on. So that meant that they came to the house, two, two elders came to her house and explained to her why she'd been um, reprimanded and to ask her if she repented and would she go back to the religion. If she did go back, she would have to make her own way there, sit at the back of the hall and nobody would be allowed to talk to her and she wouldn't be allowed to attempt to talk to anybody until the elders saw fit that she'd repented enough and she was remorseful and then they would welcome her back into the truth, as they call it, because they do believe that their religion is the truth and the only truth, the only religion. Um, so, yes, yeah, she was disfellowshipped. And mum didn't decide that going back to the Kingdom Hall and going back to religion was for her. Um, so she... Um, she didn't go back and she's shunned to this day, even though she was in her 50s and she's now 80. If a Jehovah's Witness sees her and they know that she is an ex-Jehovah's Witness, uh, they will cross the road to avoid her. Or if they pass her on the pavement, they will completely blank her, uh, look through her as if she was dead. And that is the way that they're told to treat anybody whether it's a family member or not, they're told to treat the person as if they were dead. It's a very cruel way of, they say it's teaching the person a lesson and it's bringing them back into the truth with love because they believe if they're treated like that, then uh, 